Hi, I want to finish this piece today. Um, this is a white line that I put in using the edge of my brayer. And then I had come in and put all these dark marks and I've got this skip mark here, which I really enjoy uh, from the uh, other piece. And this is probably my favorite section, this bit of orange with this blue um, woody over there. All white uh, mark making here with this uh, oil stick. Now this is going to take a bit longer to dry, unfortunately, but that's the way it goes. And, uh, and if I put it underneath, it'll probably take even longer. But, um, but I don't really care. It, it will do, it will take whatever it takes, you know? So that's how that goes. And this is sort of a, a little bit of a grayer one. But I'm going to pop in here over this. Now this has sat for a few days, so I can do this with my finger and I'm not smearing the oil and cold wax that I had already put in. And already I'm liking that a bit better. And uh, I'm going to pull some of this off of here. Maybe take my mark making tools here and, and just add some additional interest by marking through this. And it's a bit busy in here. I feel like I want to sort of quieten some things down. But I think before I do that, um, this will this will facilitate the drying a little bit by adding a little bit of wax to that surface, and uh, and that will help that a little because when you mix the cold wax or the oil with the cold wax, it does help it dry a little faster. And so maybe that will facilitate that a little. This one will sit on the surface here, so maybe it'll dry. Okay, let's see. So so this feels kind of in here, so let me kind of quiet that down a little bit. I really wanted to keep some of this skip mark here, so I'm going to leave some of that. I think I'll uh, soften some of this edge here with my brayer. Just soften this out a little bit. Yeah, I kind of feel like I lost something by doing that, so I'll, I'll use a little bit of um, this Gamsol to, uh, to kind of soften that a little bit and pull some of that away. 
So I'm letting that just sort of sit there and soak for a minute. Um, I didn't want to lose too much. And I do like drips. So this, this probably will add a little interest to that right in here. And some little speckle. in with this darker color and uh, see if I can soften this just a bit down in here. And again these these colors I'm using a limited palette so everything that I'm using is um, is either it's it's asphaltum uh, phthalo blue, um, uh, transparent orange, black and white. Those are the colors that I'm using on this piece. I sort of feel like initially when I put this in, maybe, I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. I really should have probably included it in the, um, the darker area. So I'm sort of going back and repeating myself again. And that's okay. I mean, this is what I kind of end up doing. There's no plan here. It's just a, a journey sometimes. Just figuring out what feels right to me. And I sort of like that a little bit better. I like having 
some of this contrast um, with the circular next to all this uh, very square kind of work. And I just really still feel like something needs to happen here that's um, got a lighter color. So let me mix up some things and add them back in. So I've mixed up sort of a putty color um, to kind of go back in here. To I feel like I need a Feel like I need a hard edge of this putty color somewhere and uh, so this is sort of that creamy white and I, I, I wiped that away but I really think I should have kept some of that so let me do that and I'll just put that kind of go over up in here. Why the heck not? Got some scratchy marks to it. Sort of ended up with this this beautiful green down here as a result of that Aloe and orange and other colors that got mixed in. So I think I'd like to come back and add some some dark in here and expand that a little bit. So I'll give that a try. Since I I really wanted this to be more of a dark piece, um, I want to lay in some more dark in here. But I've already done a solid here, but I want what I put next to it to be different. So instead of using my squeegee, I'm going to pop in my brayer and, uh, and just pull that in with this. So um, it'll be kind of thick. Different feel to it than this, but it picks up some of the green. That fallow has a lot of green in it, um, but um, but you know it makes a and it makes a beautiful gray. Sorry, I can't I can't talk and and paint at the same time. <laughs> it's just really challenging. I'd like for this to appear a little more strong, uh, not strong, but a little more defined down here because there's a lot of anti-definition with the circular. Um, so I'm trying to get a little more structure into a couple of places. So uh, I, I will alter this, alter this color just a smidge and come back and work down here. Um, I don't want this to get too big. This is sort of the main dark area up here at the top with some pops of this lighter blue um, and this little surprise of orange which I, I just really want to leave in place. I'm going to add a little a little edge definition to this and, uh, and so I've, I've just sort of torn off this piece of parchment paper here. And then we'll just use that that edge, maybe at, a, at an interesting angle. And pop some of this color in here. And uh, and I sort of I'm starting to like that. Um, I love that this this color of green here. So pop that in there because that was just such a yummy color of green. I put a bit more orange into my fallow um, my 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 fallow and uh, asphalt and black and white mixture 
and uh, and that yielded that that beautiful orange or that beautiful um, level of green. I just love that. I think I'd love to see, even though you know usually it's a good idea to kind of change things up a little bit when you move around the canvas. Um, funky shape there. I like that yellow. I, I feel like this is unnecessary up there, that orange. So maybe I'll uh, kind of quiet, maybe quiet it down just a hair because I don't want it to compete with this. So I just kind of rolled over that with my, my brayer just to sort of soften it and quiet it down. So, as I'm standing here looking at this, I keep <laughs> looking, I keep looking back to the camera to see um, sort of what it looks like in reverse. It gives me a different perspective. It's like putting, holding your picture up in the mirror so that you can see what it looks like. And uh, and as I'm standing here staring at it, I sort of feel like this. Uh, this maybe I could soften this corner just a little bit with some white or something. So I, I'll go mix some white up and try So that. I mixed up some white, but it's inside. I, I'll apply it light, delicately and lightly. Um, it's transparent and it, it doesn't come across as quite white. Although it's, for me, it's kind of fun to uh, include a little white in a couple places just to uh, to just have these pops of light color. And uh, I think I look bad. So although, you know, my darks and lights, it's, it's kind of become more of a dark painting than a light painting, which is, which is what I was going with. Um, and then within my mid-tone areas, or my light areas, or my dark areas, I can still go back and make a bunch of changes as long as I stay within that value range. And that's what keeps my, um, my design that I had in mind initially intact, which was kind of a large shape. Um, this is a large shape here, but a little smaller. Um, and then this little pop here. So I've mixed up some more of this this blue, and I it's kind of like a robin's egg blue. Um, and and I wanted to to add that it's a little brighter, a little a little bit brighter than what was there. Just sort of throwing that in. Let's see what happens here. Let's soften this edge. And um, soften this up because it's still wet. And just let that be. Um, I'm not sure, you know, at this moment, just looking at it, if I can do anything else to improve it. So I'm let it sit and we'll see kind of what happens. Okay, well, you know, I kind of looked at it a little bit and noticed that I had these two light shapes that feel like they kind of go. So I'm gonna cover this with just some pure asphaltum, which is just this beautiful brown. Um, and it's in all of the other colors uh, in the grayer tones in some capacity, so it goes. Right. So one of the things that I had in here was this this dark swirly area, and I kind of miss it. So so I got my ruby out. And I'm just gonna add some of that back in there because I miss it. It just felt like it was it was missing. I like the hidden underneath, uh, but I wanted to put some on the surface as well. And. Uh, and it sort of feels better to me to uh, to put it back. 
So now I'm just going back into the dark areas and just adding um, things that, um, that that really don't show up too much from a distance, but they're uh, within that, that value range. And, uh, and I really had added this blue with my Stabilo, or with my, uh, my Woody Stabilo. And, uh, and so I just added a little here and a little bit up in here because I had added those lines and then there's some you can see that sort of showed up in different places on this piece because this is, uh, for me, predominantly a blue-gray sort of piece. I'm not sure there's anything more I can do with it other than um, other than just begin to uh, just sort of do little things. But anything else that I do with um, swatches of color that are too big will possibly make it, um, will not improve it. So I'm just trying to get to that point where I feel like, yeah, this feels good, it works. And so I will post the other paintings so that you can see them together. Thank you.